surge and set an awesome task for the West Indies. Their batsmen were in no mood to hang around, and they didn't. Both openers going for just 15. Like feel he's gone, so that's a wicked... Only Richards appeared to be enjoying himself, even Starts finding time to thank Botham for his bowling. Short. He'd hit a masterly 43 before Broad stopped him going any further. And with him went any real hope for the West Indies. And takes it. England's fielding was almost flawless and there was even time for a brief encounter on the boundary between De Freitas and Lamb. Delight for England and a new record. No country had ever beaten the West Indies in three one-day matches on the trot. And now back to the disturbances at Wapping. Kate Aidy reports on how the situation has developed in the last hour. By now, the mood was a good deal uglier. The police and some of the crowd were equally determined. There was a lull at about nine o'clock for about ten minutes and then suddenly a mounted charge with a major push at the crowd in all directions. There were injuries amongst the hooves and the crowd retreated. The street is littered with debris, tempers still up. The frustration of a year outside Mr Murdoch's plant and the determination that they remain outside are in full and appalling cry. And the latest news we have is that the situation is becoming quieter. That's all from the newsroom now. From David and me, good night. This week, Nigel Lawson said it was a priceless national asset, but Roy Hattersley deplored its sleazy undercurrent of corruption. So, who got it right about the city? Tomorrow, amid continuing fallout from the Guinness affair, I'll be talking to a key figure in the government's new framework of rules for the city. Together with Corporate Affairs Minister Michael Howard, Roy Jenkins of the SDP, and Robin Cook for Labour. So join me on This Week Next Week, tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Good evening to you. Well, I should think the last thing that any of us wants is for that cold weather to come back, but I'm afraid to say it looks as if it's going to happen because this area of high pressure is now slipping away northwestwards, and that's going to allow that cold front to move down from the north and, as I say, reintroduce colder weather. But having said that, the good news is that at la long last we're going to get rid of the sort of dull, dismal conditions and we should at least have the sunshine back. There's that cold front, quite a bright band of cloud looming large to the north of the country. Now, at the moment, we have a fair amount of cloud across us, but uh, there are some breaks around, and where those breaks occur, it will end up uh, fairly misty, one or two patches of fog, a touch of frost as well, although generally speaking temperatures will hold just above freezing, 2 Celsius for instance, 36 Fahrenheit. Now tomorrow most places starting off on the cloudy side, but uh, even so, just here and there, there may even be a little uh, sort of glimmer of brightness. And I think probably as the day goes on it'll sort of brighten up fairly generally, but having said that, I don't expect all that much in the way of sunshine, but certainly perhaps in the south at least somewhat brighter than it's been lately. Now, the exception to any dry weather is that northern part of Scotland where you'll find some outbreaks of rain, light rain, that is, working their way down from the north. Colder weather following along behind, bringing some sleet or snow showers. And as you see, turning colder over Scotland, but temperatures around normal elsewhere. That's it. Good night to you. Highlights of Sunday night's viewing on BBC One. At 7.15, Compo's eating habits lead to deep thoughts in Last of the Summer Wine. Do you realise how fortunate it is that lips are at the front? <laughs> At 7.45, Miss Marple signs on for a new murder mystery set in Bertram's Hotel. Will you want a piece of Oh, why, I'm so sorry. Was it meant to be a secret? <laughs> At 8.40, Mastermind. And this week's subjects range from the history of Egypt to the works of Evelyn Waugh. After the news at 9.25, That's Life includes the National Purring Pussy Championships. That's part of Sunday evening's entertainment on BBC One. Well, BBC Two are settling down for the rest of the evening at the Film Club with two films based on the same classic novel by Edward Anderson. Firstly, Robert Altman's version of Thieves Like Us, then later at 11.55, Nicholas Ray directs his interpretation called They Live By Night. Here on One, a case of child abuse raises deeper questions for Cagney and Lacey. <laughs>